Donald Trump's leadership and the Republican Party being put to the test this week with his top GOP critic facing defeat. Our republic relies upon the goodwill of all candidates for office. And the aftershocks of last week's unprecedented search at a former president's home. No president would do what he's done. It puts the, our country in danger. And Congressman Jim Jordan's new district consolidates around Central Ohio, a district his Democratic opponent says favors her. Jim Jordan is a talking head. I am the get it done girl. The longest running political show in Central Ohio starts now. This is NBC4's The Spectrum with Colleen Marshall. A landslide primary loss for Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney as the Republican Party continues to struggle to define itself in the age of Donald Trump. Welcome to The Spectrum. I'm Colleen Marshall. The former president celebrated Cheney's defeat. He targeted her after she voted to impeach him and then help lead the January 6th investigation. Late in the week, Cheney admitted she's now considering a run for the White House herself and pledged to build a movement against Trump. All of this, as most other Republicans, condemn the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago, something I discussed with a Democrat, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. Now, my Republican colleagues, what do you expect? They know that this is something that could come up in our elections. It puts great concern and pause to other people who may have once supported him to now realize he really is off, very off, very dangerous. And I'm just glad they went in there. I'm glad that they were able to retrieve what they've done. And we are now hoping that that will help keep our nation safe. Beatty says the FBI demonstrated to a federal judge probable cause to search Mar-a-Lago. And we now know there were top secret documents in boxes at the golf resort. Colleen, when we go for a classified briefing as a member of Congress, as someone in a leadership role on the Financial Services Committee, a subcommittee chair, before we can even get to the hallway of the room we're going into, they take your cell phone, put it in a bin, they take laptops, iPods out of your purse, they will even take the watch off of your arm if it's a smart watch. We know that they don't even give us those documents. So the fact that he could review them as the president makes sense. No president would do what he's done. It puts the, our country in danger. And you've heard experts, Democrats and Republicans, who have served in those high-level positions. I mean, they're just baffled by this. They cannot believe that he would have done that. Just last week, Republican Congressman Mike Carey told us the Mar-a-Lago search was unprecedented and unnecessary. But Beatty says what's unwarranted is criticism of the FBI. We're in a difficult time right now and very difficult for our law enforcement who protect us, but they did the right thing. And I think we just have to hold to that. When good things happen, we should celebrate and, and honor that because they too are putting their lives uh, in danger. But. The bigger thing is now we have people wanting to go into federal government agencies and do harm. It brings great concern to me the direction that the last president has helped put this country in, and I blame him for much of this. Nearly $10 million in bonuses were approved this week for the money managers of the state teachers retirement system, even though the investment fund they manage lost $3 billion in the past year. Angry retirees who have gone years without their promised annual cost of living adjustments say it's a slap in the face to award bonuses to investors when the pension fund they manage is in the red. You know, if you ever want to get in touch with your anger, all you ever have to do is go to an STRS board meeting. The term shared sacrifice, they have never sacrificed anything for our benefit. It's our money. Money that seems to be draining away. The fund down $3 billion and $10 million out the door in bonuses. Board members who voted yes said the investors met certain benchmarks. 
they talk about meeting a five-year benchmark. Well, our five-year benchmark is we're down almost a quarter of a 25% of our purchasing power. So I just don't understand how they can enrich themselves at our expense. In the education world, benchmarks mean something. It's what our, we want our children to meet. But evidently, SRS can do anything they want and still meet their benchmarks. Very discouraging. But a spokesman for STRS tells me the losses could have been even greater if those benchmarks had not been met. Preserving $1.8 billion in a market downturn is, is outstanding performance. But preserving $1.8 billion while you're losing $3 billion, that, is that an outstanding performance? There's still $3 billion in the hole, right? I, I guess well, the logic have, of this I'm just missing. Well, we have to invest the money somewhere to grow the assets. We're anticipating the assets growing at 7% per year. So even with the underperformance of the market this year, you know, over the last couple of years, over the last five years, we're meeting that 7% annual uh, return. But retirees say that's not true. When the numbers appeared to be up, they say it was because of member sacrifices. The actives are paying more, working longer, receiving less. The retirees have had their cola frozen. None of it is based on the comeback, based on the investments and what the investors have been doing. So it's really, are they just going to keep taking and taking and taking from the active members and the retirees? Because that's how the fund is balancing itself. Now, retirees say they are counting on the three new board members who take office next month to turn the ship around, to insist on an accurate audit and then act on it, and to take care of members before investors. Just you're kind of like they feel more strongly that they need to take care of them than they do us. Here on the spectrum, we want to help you get ready for the November election, especially since the congressional district boundary shifted when Ohio lost one of its congressional seats. This morning, we sit down with the Democrat who was running in the realigned fourth district, Tammy Wilson. She'll face a veteran of Capitol Hill known as the bulldog of the Republican Party, Jim Jordan. Jordan will be a force to be reckoned with, but Wilson says she's ready for the fight. First of all, um, the redistricting has really gone in my favor. Um, over 53% of the district is new to Jim Jordan, and a lot of people do not like him. Tammy Wilson says she's a single mom, a small business owner who struggled during the pandemic, ineligible for PPP loans because her business was too new. Now she says she wants to help people. Democracy is a really huge, um, the very foundation of our country is at risk right now. Um, financial security is really important. Um, I want to, you know, cut taxes. When Trump was in office, he in, um, put a salt cap on um, the um, state and local tax. So if your property tax is over $10,000, you can't write off any more than that. I really want to remove that salt cap. I want to remove this second social security tax. It's getting double tax right now. You get taxed when you pay in and then you get taxed when you take it out and also cut taxes on overtime pay as well. We need to work on inflation. I think government, there's a lot of overspending in government that we really need to, you know, pay attention to. Even though President Biden has had some legislative victories in recent weeks, his approval rating is low. That's always bad news for the midterms for the party in power. Are you concerned just about the tone of politics right now? Well, I'm a very moderate candidate. I'm probably more independent. Um, so I'm just really about the kitchen table issues, just like Sherrod Brown and Tim Ryan. So I am really positioning myself to just be all about common sense legislation. I think we have extremes on um, with both parties from the left and the right. And I think we really need to get back to center with our country so we can move forward. Wilson says her challenge is to get voters to know her and to question Jim Jordan's character. I've met with the OSU wrestlers who say that he knew that they were being sexually abused and he didn't do anything to stop it. So then here you have a man who was never on the right side of just simple 
softball issues. If you cannot get on the right side of sexual abuse for students that you help recruit, that you promised their parents that you would take care of them and keep them safe, but then you fed them to a predator, and then he attacked a 10-year-old girl who was sexually assaulted. I mean, it really comes down to character, and we really cannot tolerate that kind of immoral person in our government. What's the one thing you want voters to know about you? Wow, I'm a really, I'm a get it done person. Jim Jordan is a talking head. I am the get it done girl. So I like to, um, that's why my slogan is get things done. Um, I know that there are a lot of people in the district that are suffering. They are struggling. They're hungry. Some are homeless. Um, people are losing their jobs and uh, businesses. So I want to be their advocate, not their talking head, but their action taker in DC. That is my whole purpose of running for office. I should point out we have repeatedly called the office of Congressman Jim Jordan and sent emails to him and his staff requesting an interview. There has been no response. An Ohio Republican has proposed what he calls common sense gun legislation. We'll deep dive into his proposals after the break. An Ohio Republican lawmaker is taking a stand against gun violence. The proposal by Senator Matt Dolan would amp up gun restrictions, veering away from traditional party lines on that issue. Statehouse reporter Natalie Fahmy explains what else his bill would do. Senate Bill 357, proposed by State Senator Matt Dolan, has five parts to it. He says it's all common sense legislation and would keep Ohioans safe while protecting their Second Amendment rights. It's not taking away guns and it will protect us in Ohio. Dolan's proposed bill has five parts. Two parts address mental illness. The bill would expand resources and says if someone is determined to be mentally ill, a judge can issue an order for a temporary hold of their firearms until they receive the help they need. Why are we having these tragic events? And one thing that seems to be uniform in all of them is that the shooter ultimately is suffering from some level of mental illness. The bill also requires a co-signer for gun purchasers between ages 18 and 21 for anything other than a single shot rifle. The co-signer has to be 25 and does bear responsibility. If that gun that you co-signed for was used or brandished in the commission of a felony crime, the 25-year-old or older co-signer faces civil liability. David Pepper, the former chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party, says he looks at this bill and thinks common sense legislation. But he says when the strong Ohio bill was introduced with similar provisions, it did not gain enough support. Totally common sense, actually very small steps, nothing really bold. They didn't even get a hearing. Pepper says he thinks this bill is a good start to a much needed conversation. The, the idea that someone can be a danger to themselves and other people and that right now there's nothing that can be done to stop them is so unthinkable that anything that would help change that, I think it's worth pursuing. Dolan says he would not support any provision that bans guns, including assault rifles, in this bill. At the State House, I'm Natalie Fahmy. Up next, more reaction from our All Star Roundtable to Senator Dolan's proposal and the even bigger legislation enacted out of Washington this week the Inflation Reduction Act. Welcome back. In our roundtable this week, we have with us Democrat Greg Haas and Republican Bob Clegg, two strategists in to talk about the Inflation Reduction Act that was signed into law this week. They're promising change on climate control. They're promising inflation reduction. I see you laughing a little bit, so I'm going to yes. go to you first, Bob. <laughs> Can we expect some good things out of this bill? Well, I'm, I'm just going to tell you what the Congressional Budget Office says. They say in the short term, it'll actually make inflation worse. In the long term, it will have little to no effect on inflation. The other thing they said was P uh, Americans that earn less than $400,000 a year are going to pay an additional $20 billion in taxes because of this bill that's become law. And I mean, I thought we were supposed to be protecting the middle class. Obviously, that isn't the case. And that is not what we're hearing about that bill from Democrats who backed it, who say that 
taxes will go to corporations. Yep. So maybe you mean it'll trickle down to them because corporations will raise their prices because well, that's corporations. The they, that's will the, make I think they're saying additional audits that's going to occur also through the uh, doubling of the IRS agents. I think that's what the CBO was saying. Well, yeah. Well, and and and, and which is interesting because you know we clearly have a problem with people, um, rich people who aren't paying. And and, um, and you know pumping up enforcement to be opposed to that after after the cuts that have occurred in the IRS, just to me is uh, you, you know crazy. But but this bill will will cut for people who are paying for for pharmaceuticals, for uh, any kind of health care. I mean, it's going to take money. Um, it's going to put money back in their pockets. The pharmacy industry has has been ripping off this state and others you know people say they want to see government act more like a business well what business with massive buying power would go to any group and say oh well just charge me whatever you want it wouldn't happen but that's what republicans fought for yeah. and, and this is going this is going to and it also gives medicare the right now to right. negotiate right. so Which, certainly yeah. for people on fixed incomes yeah. or for elderly people this could be a boon to them and they're talking about climate control we've seen some terrible natural disasters just within the past year that everybody's tying to climate control is this a little too little too late though greg well that's that's the fear i mean you know i i, I that I, that is a legitimate fear but we have to fight and we have to do everything we can um but you know i mean um you know i think we're all concerned that it's been too little too late i also want to ask you both about a bill that was proposed strangely enough by a republican this mm -hmm. week in the ohio legislature who wants to have some He's not calling it gun controls, but some restrictions on buying guns. Uh, Matt Dolan, a yeah. former Senate candidate who's in the legislature, is saying we should have more mental health restrictions. If you're between 18 and 21 and you buy a gun, you have to have a co-signer. He wants more mental health controls for people with guns. Is this a good idea? Well, Colleen, whenever we've talked about gun control on this show, remember, I've always said the big part of this is not the gun control part of it it's the mental health part of it i go and that's the part that nobody wants to tackle because it's so difficult well let's give senator dolan kudos for trying to tackle that somebody has to because that's the really the the biggest problem in all of these you know shootings that are going on around the country we got to get these people that are mentally ill to away from Doing stuff like this. Yeah, I, I, well, I, Democrats I, would support that, absolutely right? Absolutely, we have. I mean, for, for you to say nobody has done anything about it, Democrats have been trying for 15 years. No, Democrats aren't and, about and, taking and, away guns. They no, don't talk no, about no, the mental no, health aspect. That is not true. That's, that's the mythology that you guys create. It is not factual. The reality is that we've been fighting to keep people who have domestic violence, mental health issues away from guns, and you guys have, have defended it. And, and it will be referred to very soon as uh, gun control by. Republicans in the House. I want to move on to something because I want to play something for each of you. I talked earlier in this program to Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, and one of the things that we talked about was uh, there's talk that maybe Jim Jordan, a Republican from here in Ohio, might be selected as the next Speaker of the House if Republicans take control. I want you to listen to what she had to say about that. If Democrats lose control of the House, obviously there will be a new House Speaker. Yes. And some are saying that should be Jim Jordan from right here in Ohio. Tell me what uh, that would be like. I think my response answers it all. <laughs> I'm laughing. It would be the biggest joke for the state of Ohio and for this country. And she calls it a joke. We'll find out what our experts have to say about it, their opinion on that, when we come back. Welcome back. Before we went to break, we heard Congresswoman Joyce Beatty say it would be a joke if Ohioan Jim Jordan becomes Speaker of the House. Bob Clegg, our Republican, what say you? Well, first off, he's my new congressman, so, and I disagree with Joyce Beatty. If Beatty. he wins. It, yeah, <laughs> uh, if he wins, which I think he will. Uh, but I don't agree with her. It is not a joke. But I think, you know, Congressman Jordan's made it very clear he wants to become Chairman of the Judiciary because he has a lot of plans as chairman of judiciary, including Hunter Biden, 
uh, committee hearings, uh, FBI. He's got 12 uh, FBI whistleblowers ready to testify about how politicized the FBI has become. I think he's got his agenda all set for when they go in the majority. And Greg, what do you say? Well, first of all, um, I think, you know, Congressman Beatty is a very elegant and classy person. And, and her reaction to this is kind of like there's three three reactions that most of us Democrats would have, uh, laugh, cry, or, or, or vomit <laughs> at the idea. And, and, you know, she chose the classiest one, um, and, and, you know, and I, but the idea of, uh, you know, Jim Jordan being speaker is as scary as Donald Trump being president. All right, we thank both of you for being with us, and we thank you for being with us. We'll see you next week on The Spectrum.